Shabbat Shalom, Body of Messiah. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's laws and commandments. We pray your week was good. And so let's get started. I want to thank you for tuning in to our channel, to our ministry. We pray it's a blessing to you. We just encourage you to keep reading, keep studying, keep feeding, keep learning from Yah's laws and commandments. Today we're going to talk about Passover. We're going to share some things about Passover. So let's get started. The first thing that we want to talk about is many Christian believers believe in Easter. So the first thing we want to do is expose and it's not an in-depth teaching, so you need to do your research. And there are other good materials out there and good information that you can easily research the pagan roots of Easter. But nonetheless, let's just research what the scripture says about Easter. And if we go, there's only one place in the King James Version that records the word Easter, and Acts, that is Acts 12. Now why <clears throat> King Jimmy was the only person to change the word Pesach, P-E-S-A-C-H, which is in Hebrew, and it means Passover. Well, he changed it. Why did he change it? Because he was under the influence of Rome, Constantine, and they were seeking to discredit anything that is Jewish, and they were seeking to convince people that they can live and keep their pagan festivals, and yet trying to deceive people into thinking that their pagan festivals can be biblical, like Christmas, Easter, so on and so forth. So let's, in Acts 12, 1, it says, Now that, that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the assembly, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also, and those were the days of unleavened bread. So we see clearly here that the disciples, the whole culture, continued in observing. Yah's feasts. They continued oh, being obedient to Yahweh's laws and commandments. And in verse 4 it says, And when he apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after now, King James says Easter, but every other translation, even like your NIVs, your ESVs, your English versions, they all translated Passover. I'm reading out of a restored name, King James Version, put out by Yahweh uh, Restoration Ministries, and it says to keep him intending after Passover to bring him forth to the people. So we see here that for whatever reason, they translated and they changed what was in the original language from Passover to Easter. 
So it was not in the original language. So that means that is not what the writer of the book of Acts was communicating. He was describing Peter's taken captive, thrown in prison. He's describing the time of year it was, unleavened bread, and Passover, not Easter. Now, the word Easter comes from a Anglo-Saxon word, and it's E-O-S-T-R-E, -E, Estre, Estre. The name, that name, E-S-T-R-O, E-O-S-T-R-E, -E, is a name of the goddess, the pagan goddess of spring. And now when you think of all the traditions that the West has accepted and participate in during the time of Easter, and they're, they're not just um, things someone came up with to make things fun for kids, to give kids something fun to do. No, there are reasons that they do these things. So bunnies are the symbols of fertility, while eggs were seen as pagan symbols of death and life. If you were to research the word Easter, you will find it only mentioned once and that is in the, ver in the King James Version of the scripture we read. So why would a community of people who say they believe the scriptures, who say they live according to the scriptures, who say they are word people, then make a doctrine a holiday out of something that was mistranslated and that represents paganism. And with every pagan holiday, sexual perversion was involved. So why would that be? Why would a community an organization, people, that say they believe in the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who never sanctioned the word Easter, who never celebrated anything to do with Easter unless they backslid and were in paganism, why would they say that Christianity, Easter, and the resurrection were all linked together. They had to have been deceived. And I don't say this being harsh or ugly. It's just a fact. When we were in Christianity, we too were deceived into thinking because the gods behind this, the demonic beings behind this, wanted to deceive us and deceive you into thinking that you can participate in something that is pagan from the very foundation of it and then call it something that is biblical. Again, go back to this line of thought. If the world celebrates it, it's not of Messiah. If the world participates in it, if the world promotes it, if the world, people that are cussing, fussing, and lusting, promote it, support it, participate in it, then it's not of Messiah. Then it's not of Yahweh. 
it's not of his laws and commandments. When you research it, you will find it nowhere in Yahweh's laws and commandments. You will find Yahshua, Yahshua, never participating in anything and calling it Easter. You will not find in the original language, in the scriptures, any scripture that validates Easter, except for when they changed it to get it to line up with their agenda, and that was to establish paganism, Rome's paganism, and to remove anything that was Hebraic. So when you participate in Easter, when you allow your children to participate in coloring of eggs and, and egg hunting in the park, so on and so forth, you are allowing them to participate in a form of paganism. It may seem harmless, but nonetheless, it's indoctrinating them into paganism so witchcraft would be simple for them to accept. And all other forms of paganism, you know, you start when you start with a little child and you teach them about the Easter Bunny and you teach them about Santa Claus and you teach them about the Tooth Fairy and you teach them about Halloween, when they get older, it's just going to be second nature. The same way, if you are taught about the Feast of Yahweh, when you get older, it will too also be second nature. Most of us were never taught that. So as we have gotten older and we have seen the truth and the light has come on, it's harder to unlearn the lies of paganism and it's harder to renew our minds to what is accurate. If you ask anybody about Easter or Christmas or Halloween, instantly, even if you're Hebraic, you can tell them the days, you can tell them what it's about, so on and so forth. But if you ask even people that are Hebraic, people that believe Yah's laws and commandments, and you ask them, what does Passover mean? Where can I find scriptures about Passover? Where can I, what does unleavened bread represent? What does the Feast of First Fruits represent? Most of them may not be able to explain it to you, may not be able to understand it and show you the scriptures. Why? It hasn't been indoctrinated into our lives and we have not been indoctrinated into it to the degree that we should and that's why we keep teaching over and over and over again Yahweh's laws and commandments. Why? Paul said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. The word that he was referring to then was the Torah, Yah's instructions. And Yah's instructions is to keep the Passover not Easter. So understand this, that in um, the truth and in the Torah, there is no Easter. Easter is foreign. Now, if you choose to continue Celebrating Easter, that's between you and the Creator. And you will have to deal with Him of why you rejected His Word, you rejected His laws and commandments, and you chose to believe like the children of Israel did in Mark 7 when they believed the traditions of the elders more than the commandments of Yahweh. And Yahshua said that his word would have no effect. Read it out. 
Here's another thing. It's Passover, not Easter. We need to do your research on the word Easter, and you'll see it's another total pagan holiday that Catholicism and Christianity has deceived us as they were deceived into thinking that it represents something biblical. It's just another Constantine deception. Easter is just another Constantine deception. All right, now Passover to Hebrew believers, whoops, sorry, Passover to Hebrew believers is a declaration of independence from slavery. Is a declaration, you know how in America on July 4th, most people, we don't because we discovered what it's really about, but most people celebrate a declaration of independence. Well, Passover is the biblical declaration of your independence from slavery and from lawlessness, from the captivity of sin, fear, anxiety, sickness, disease, addictions, bondages, death, and eternal fire. Yahshua freed us with his Passover blood. Now, in one of the things you, you can research that... Um, Actually, if you, if you turn to Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 6, this is when Yahweh was instituting the Feast of Passover. And we know that the Feast of Passover and all the other feasts are eternal, are forever. We also know that we are to celebrate them as a memorial from generation to generation. All right? If you read Exodus 12, you'll see that. Now in verse 6, and it says, And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it, in the evening. Now it's referring to the Passover lamb. So the Passover lamb, not Yeshua, but the, phys the physical Passover lamb that they did in Exodus 12 that represented Yahshua, they were to kill it on the evening of the 14th, which is. <coughs> between 3 and 5 o'clock, and at sundown on the 14th starts the Feast of Passover. Now, if you do your research, you will see that Yahshua was crucified on the 14th. Let's see if I can find that scripture um, real quick. Well, for time's sake, let's... That when Yeshua was crucified, at 3 p.m. on Passover, it was the same time that they were crucifying the physical in the temple that they were slaughtering the Passover lamb. The Jews that were anti Yahshua were in the temple crucify or not crucifying, sacrificing the physical four legged Passover lamb. At the same time that Yahshua was being crucified to the tree. Um, I wish, see, this is what I mean by you talk to me about faith, you talk to me about healing, because 
I've been indoctrinated in it for 40 plus years. Those scriptures just roll out of me. But when we talk about things like the feasts and things, I have to really concentrate on those scriptures. And forgive me, uh, but I'll put it in the description box below of the scripture in the Gospels that refer to and specify that Yeshua was being killed at the same time, was being crucified at the same time the four-legged Passover lamb was being sacrificed to Yahweh. And so to me, that is awesome. Again, research it for yourself. Something I did every day this week. I read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John their versions of what took place um, on Passover and leading up to the crucifixion and to the resurrection the Feast of First Fruits. And I just went over each version and read it slowly and wrote notes in my, my Bible app. I can write notes, you know, to help me remember things and to connect other things. But nonetheless, Yahshua freed us from the captivity of lawlessness when he was crucified. He freed us from the captivity of the effects of every curse. Christ, or Messiah, has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Messiah. Now, that scripture in Galatians 3.13 says we have been redeemed from the effects of the curse. It implies nothing. It says nothing about we've been redeemed from needing to follow and obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. It, sa it just says we've been redeemed from the effects of the curse. It does not eliminate the necessity for you to learn about Yah's laws and commandments and for you to have a heart's desire to obey his laws and commandments, which includes obeying all his feasts. So Yahshua has redeemed us from any curse, from any sickness. He's redeemed us from the captivity. And a few weeks ago, I did a teaching on that. And I just keep going over that. I am set free from any captivity, whether it's fear, captivity of lack, captivity of, of um, anxiety, captivity of, of allergies, of any sickness or disease, or whatever the case may be. You have been set free by the blood of the Passover lamb. And as you celebrate, and remember what Yahshua did on the stake. What the Passover is all about. It's about your freedom and independence from lawlessness that Yahshua has given you and I the authority to walk on and tread on over all the power of the enemy, which includes lawlessness, which includes sickness, disease, and demonic beings, and everything else. And that nothing shall by any means harm us. We have been, been given by Yahshua, and the purpose of celebrating the Passover is to celebrate our freedom and our independence from lawlessness that the devil can make you break the law, the devil can make you sin, the devil can make you do anything you do not want to yield to or to do. You know, I remember that Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it. It was funny, but it was deceptive. It is deceptive. 
You do not have to yield to the temptation of the flesh. You do not have to yield to any temptation of the evil one and of any lawlessness. You have been given power through the power of Yahshua's spirit to walk in victory, to resist your, the, the devil, to keep submitting to Yah's laws and commandments, and they will flee from you. So Passover is not about Easter. It's not about a fertility goddess. Passover is not Easter, and Easter is not Passover. When you celebrate Easter, you're participating in paganism. When you celebrate Passover, you are participating in obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. You are participating in memor um, honoring the sacrifice on the stake by the Lamb of Yahweh, who took away your sin, you are participating in worshiping the Creator. You are participating in everything that Yah is about. So, hallelujah. And Passover, bottom line it. Passover is your independence from lawlessness and from any other form of captivity that the enemy would try to put upon you. When he tries to put upon you, it may be overwhelming you, it may be attacking your body, your mind, or whatever, and you just have to take your stand against it and say, you cannot remain in this body or in my mind or in my life because Yahshua the Messiah has redeemed me from you. He w was made a curse so that I could be set free by his blood. And I decree and I declare his laws and commandments and his laws and commandments say I am set free by the blood of the Messiah. Hallelujah. So Passover is a celebration of your independence. It is also a celebration of being of the new birth, of having a fresh birth in Yeshua's name, that he has written his laws and commandments upon your heart. It's all about the new birth. It's all about being born from above. Celebrating that because of what the precious Lamb of Yahweh did, you and I are adapted, grafted in, joined together as one, and we are just as much a part of Israel as Yeshua, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter are part of Israel. So hallelujah. So I pray this, this helped you understand a little bit more about Passover or if you already knew these things that it just reinforced the understanding of what Passover is and that it also revealed to you that Easter is a pagan holiday and that it was made up by Constantine, Christianity, and Catholicism to enforce and to keep people captive in lawlessness, to keep people captive in, pay, in pagan sun god worship because that's what Constantine was all about. And that Easter is just another Constantine deception. Get that. Easter. Christmas, Halloween, New Year's are just an, another Constantine deception to deceive people into thinking that those holidays have anything to do with Messiah and the Torah and anything biblical. They do not. Do your research. Do your research. 
And I pray that Yah's Spirit would empower you to have the backbone and the boldness to step out in faith and to turn away from everything that has anything to do with paganism and turn to Yahweh's laws and commandments. Turn to his instructions, turn to his Torah, and obey it by faith. So, Father, we just thank you for this word. We bless you. We honor you in this day, this Shabbat, which is also a Sabbath. We praise you. We bless you. And we thank you for empowering us to keep it. We thank you for revealing more and more and more truth concerning the Sabbath, concerning the Passover, concerning what is not the Passover as well in the power of your name. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. If you want to connect with us, our, our um, website is YahwehYahshuaAssembly.com or you can connect with me, Mark Pulley, or Yahweh Yeshua Assembly on Facebook or on MeWe or on social media sites. Until next time, Yahweh bless you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you. Yahweh set you free from every form of captivity this Passover season. Yah bless you.